Um, thank you, Marty. It's really like a privilege to talk to you. Um, you're a legend. I tell my friends that I'm friends with you like that. I know the person that invented the cell phone. Every time I hear from you, I learn something new and your offer to, you know, record with us and just share with me and share with some of the people that follow us on LinkedIn uh, and other channels like about innovation and about your perspectives. It's just one more way to, you know, memorialize some of the great things you've brought to the world uh, and learn from you and hopefully, you know, make some breakthroughs um, at New Current, you know, in the same innovative uh mold that you've created and left as a legacy here in Chicago, but also for the world. So thank you again. Oh, it's my pleasure, uh, Jacob. But I have to say that the inverse is true. It's my privilege uh, oh. to be with you. You're in the real world. I'm just thinking about things now. I'm a has-been. Uh, ah. uh, being able to talk to somebody that's doing breakthroughs in what I think is an explosive industry is a privilege for me. So thanks for inviting me. I will not let you get away with calling yourself a has-been. I think the proper word is legend, uh, and you, you are. So and we, um, so we uh, reevaluated your book, uh, just kind of looked at it when we were preparing for this. I'd already read it. I had you sign it for me uh, one time. I love having my personal signed copy. Uh, it's, a, it's a little guilty pleasure of mine if I get to meet an author, have him sign it. Um, your book's so legendary about innovation and um one of the things that, you know, you have just this immense knowledge of, of is being early in a market, you, you know, building something that no one knows they need yet. It's nascent demand. They don't may, they may not even understand the pain they have because they don't realize the opportunity ahead of them. So what I wanted to ask you about was just kind of like innovation cycle and how you think about that, um, you know, from the ideas that don't work to when do you have, how do you know you have an idea that's worth leaning into? When do you have an idea that you know is worth like commercializing? How do, how do you think about that? Cause you've invented so many things uh, that are meaningful. Uh, how do you think about the innovation cycle? Well, uh, first of all, you've kind of glamorized this issue of, uh, of thinking about the future and, and coming up with future products uh, because uh, there are a lot of skeptics around and uh, would you believe that 99% of the time the skeptics are right? <laughs> so, I don't believe it, but... But uh, no, sure. it, it's true because, uh, you know, for every uh, idea like uh, a cell phone and like a wireless charging, uh, there, are, uh, there are 99 other ideas that somebody that other people have that really don't have merit. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, uh, it can be a challenge, even when you're right. If you're wrong, well, forget it. But uh, even when, when you're right, uh, uh, getting over uh, or through the, the uh, wall that the skeptics put up is, uh, is a major challenge. Uh, but uh, if you get to the essence of what uh, innovation is, uh, and, and to me, innovation uh, is very simple. Uh, it's got to be something that uh, that uh, improves the human experience. I have a mantra that's, uh, that's really boring that says that uh, the definition of technology uh, is uh, it's the application of science to create products and services that make people's lives better. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people forget the people part about it and, uh, and get... Uh, uh, caught up in the novelty, uh, the curiosity, and, and those things are very nice, but they got nothing to do with technology. Uh, and, and that specific thing, by the way, is, is we, we witness it every day and, and uh, in big ways, uh, like uh, the uh, flap about 5 and 6G. Uh, I'm sure you and your audience are, are quite familiar with that. Uh, I happen to be... Uh, uh, an advocate of 5 and 6G, but I think that the carriers are deluding us uh, and misappropriating their responsibilities because it's going to be a lot of time before uh, 5 and 6G uh, uh, benefit people. So uh, I just use that as an example. Yeah, but uh, there's nothing uh, easy about technology, but on the other hand, it is uh, for people like me who have a 
uncontrolled imagination. It's an exciting kind of thing uh, always. I, uh, I tell people when they uh, ask me what it's like to be a, a futurist, I say uh, the reason uh, that I uh, know a, a little bit about the future is I spent so much time there because I do spend a lot of time, Jacob, uh, uh, dreaming about things. And that's not a very uh, uh, a good uh, approach for somebody like who's in a role like yours where the, you're a chief executive and you've got to worry about uh, oh, what I consider to be minor details like revenues and profits and, <laughs> and nature. So excuse me for talking so long on that subject, but I, I think I got off the track. No, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It really reminds me about um, the quote, or I'll, I'm sure it's a paraphrase at this point, uh, that Edison said, he didn't fail 10,000 times in creating the light bulb. He just found 10,000 ways that don't work until he got to the one that does work. Yeah. And just how, how living in the future and thinking about, you know, what people need and how hard it is to get there. And, you know, the skeptics were right on him 10,000 times uh, that he's not going to create a light bulb that works and is commercially viable and is interesting, but he did break through uh, and, and he created something that, you know, really materially changed the world and the quality of life for humanity. And that's that other point that you were really hitting on, which is, you know, technology with that doesn't serve an improvement to the human condition or humanity uh, doesn't really serve anything. It's, it's kind of like um, maybe a passion project of the creator uh, you need tech now. You need to be thinking about the user. You need to be thinking about the benefit it delivers um, if you want it to be meaningful. Otherwise, you know, to what end are you inventing it if it's not going to improve uh, the lives of the users? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, uh, your example of Edison, uh, whom I don't uh, uh, like very much, uh, but. Uh, are you a Tesla guy? Uh, well, yeah, it's a matter of. It, well, we're, team Tesla, we're team Tesla here because of his wireless power innovations. Yeah, uh, exactly. You well, know, a lot I, of innovation happens in Chicago, Marty. You, you yeah. invented, I think, the cell phone here. Uh, Tesla first unveiled wireless power at the 1893 World's Fair, the Columbian Exposition here in Chicago. Obviously, New Current's doing a lot of our own inventing here. This is an underrated innovation hub here in Chicago, but we're team Tesla, too. You don't have to sell me on that. <laughs> yeah, but the point I was making is that there, there are two issues uh, that the uh, innovator has to do is uh, number one, be persistent. Uh, mm, because, uh, uh, and in fact, uh, uh, I've got a mantra about that that, I, that Motorola taught me, and that is uh, uh, do not fear failure, reach out. So uh, uh, persistence is really uh, important. And the second one that uh, that Edison uh, illustrated is uh, objectivity. You really do have to, you know, dreaming is a good thing, but at some point you do have to face reality and mm -hmm. bump your uh, ideas uh, and your progress against uh, objective facts. And if you get carried away and uh, try to do uh, a product, uh, an idea on emotion, you are in deep trouble. Yeah. Interesting. He definitely seemed to, in, in the dynamic of Edison and Tesla, uh, the whole Westinghouse and is it JP Morgan was the other one. They, they also kept them very grounded in objectivity and business progress, not just, uh, not just wild dreams. And, you know, Tesla probably was a little bit more of a wild dreamer, bigger picture, you know, creating, using the earth's res resonant frequency to create free electricity for everyone. Uh, it was his thing, but I don't think the bankers liked him quite as much because he wasn't drawing it down to how are you going to productize this and make, uh, make some money out of it? Well, uh, the one thing we shouldn't do is, is uh, use Tesla uh, and Edison as examples of ideal entrepreneurs because uh, they were, uh, Edison was not a very nice person. It was uh, totally uh, focused on himself. Uh, and Tesla was, uh, I hate to put it that way because I have so much admiration for him, but he was a little crazy. So uh, if, if you uh, have read all the stories about him, but uh, the reality is that he really did invent uh, wireless communications, not, uh, not Marconi. 
who, who I also admire because he commercialized radio, uh, but uh, Tesla was the uh, the dreamer and in many ways the executor. So uh, there are other uh, entrepreneurs that we could use as examples, like Jacob. I'll get out here. You, you stole my line. I was literally just about to tell you, I mean, I get the privilege of talking to one of my uh, inventor mentors here, one of my heroes, uh, you know, Time Magazine's top, you know, 100 inventors of all time right here, like in this conversation. Um, if you had a chance to talk to any inventors from history, um, if it's not Edison and Tesla and, or Mar and Marconi, who do you really look up to? Uh, who, who should other innovators, aspiring innovators or current innovators uh, study other than you, of course, but uh, you're not going to say yourself because you're too modest. So I'll say you, and now you give me another person that they should look into. 